Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited to be FaceTiming you. Hi, I'm Ritika Gupta. I play Rena Verk on Hulu series Under the Bridge, streaming on Hulu, and this is Young Entertainment. So what did you know about Under the Bridge murder case before auditioning? Yeah, so I actually had no idea about the case prior to auditioning for it, but kind of, you know, after I got the role, I really decided to just do a big deep dive into it. So I discovered Rebecca's book as um as well as Manjeet's book about Rena. So I just really decided to study on that and really just understand not only Rebecca's perspective, but, you know, Rena's father, Manjeet, as well, which really helps me get into the role of Rena. Amazing. I mean, that's a lot of deep diving. You had to do so many details you to figure out. So what was the single most important thing you did to prepare for the audition? Ooh, that's a great question. I think for me, it was just really understanding and really reading in between each lines. I think it's super important to not just be reading off, you know, the script, but to really understand, you know, what's the context behind the scene, what's going on, you know, what could be happening prior to the scene. I think it's really important to also have character dynamic, you know, even though it won't be, you know, the real Josephine standing behind the camera right now, it's still important to like feel that connection. So I think that was definitely my most important aspect. I love that. And sounds like you really, really know your stuff. Um, if you don't mind me asking, do you have a certain method of acting that you use? Ooh, that's a great question. I think for me, I was just surrounded by such an amazing cast. Like I could not go into the room for at least five seconds without smiling. So it was <laughs> definitely important for me to stay into character, you know, when we weren't shooting. But I think for me, I was just really fond of learning her characteristics and kind of the things that made her Rena. I think one thing that really stood out to me was the way she smiled. I really looked at a lot of images and she had you know kind of like an upside down smile almost so I think when we were shooting you know the picture the missing picture it was really important for me to symbolize that and make sure because that was a really big part of her so I did want to you know really symbolize that and make sure it was there for her. Wow that's really incredible how did you go into this knowing Rena's fate? Oh that's a great question I think for me, I feel like Rena definitely gets mistaken a lot for, you know, a troubled teenager. But I think, honestly, we've all had our moments where we've tried to fit in. I think we've all walked into a room and kind of felt like the odd one out. So I think it's really important to just understand who she was and put myself in her shoes and like take my own experiences and relate myself to her in a way to really understand the things that she was going through. Yeah, that's so good. Bringing that relatability and like that likability too to the character. Um, sounds like you really did your homework and you had so many layers involved. Um, that is so cool to hear. So since Under the Bridge is all about a murder case, how would you describe it if it were an actual case? Like maybe, you know, you work for the FBI, you're going in, you're giv giving everybody the low down. How would you describe the case? Oh my gosh, that is just such a multi-layered question. <laughs> it is. If I, if I had to think about it kind of like a police officer like Cam, I would kind of think of it as just, you know, a 14-year-old girl, Rena Verk, you know, she's she's done this before. She has, you know, gone away from home a couple of times, but this does feel different this time. She's kind of surrounded by a lot of teens similar to her age, and they do share a lot of similarities, but also different you know, aspects of their life. So I think it's really important to see, you know, what truly happened that night, what, who was involved, who was there. And I mean, if I was part of the case, I would definitely be investigating each and every single person under that bridge. Yes, definitely. Okay. So acting is first, and then maybe you will have a career as the FB in the FBI yes. after this. <laughs> I love it. What did you do to get into the 90s headspace? Did you have like a 90s playlist you listen to? I want to know about the 90s fashion. So give me all, all the details about the 90s and how you got into that headspace. Yes. So I absolutely love that question because me and my acting coach, I think one of our first days getting our script and about to shoot the show, I 
really wanted to get in the headspace of kind of listening to that 90s music because for me personally that is just not my genre and I don't listen to that like on a regular basis but for me I actually made a Rena playlist and I made songs that I kind of think would just really fit into who she was and the songs that she would like and I made that playlist and I would listen to it before going on set each day to really get into her headspace and kind of just understand the type of music she you know she enjoyed because I think music is such a big part of our lives and yeah. I really enjoy listening to music and I think it really does you know bring a lot of who you are and your character so that was super important to me. Yeah that's amazing okay and 90s fashion how did you feel about that? Oh my gosh I absolutely loved the 90s fashion there was the one coat the black and white coat that Rena wore which I absolutely loved and I remember Patty Henderson our beautiful costume designer she was just so incredible she let me um on like one of my last days on set she let me kind of go through um some of the things that she wasn't going to use and she let me decide like oh I really like these shoes and she let me keep them and she's literally just the sweetest and it was so fun to see kind of the fashion because I love that type of streetwear so it's really fun to see. That is so fun. And I love that you got to take home some stuff and wear it. That's so special. So have those pieces that you got to take from set, have you worn them out and about yet? Oh my God. Yes. I have these Adidas um, shoes that I got from the set. I literally wear them out on a day-to-day basis. I love (laughs) them. They're so comfy. So yes, I definitely do. I love that. And that's such like a sweet reminder of your time on set and this amazing show that you're a part of. And That is so fun. I love that. And when you talk to actors, a lot of times they don't get to keep stuff from set. So I always like to ask if, if, you know, if you got to take something home. So that is so exciting. What is your favorite thing about Rena? Oh, that's a great question. I think for me, it was really cool and interesting to see her dynamic with her siblings. I think we don't get to see it a lot during the during the show, but I think doing my research and really understanding, especially in Manjeet's book, it was really interesting for me to kind of understand Rena's family dynamic. I think especially, you know, in that scene in episode two, when she's at the dinner table and it is her birthday, you know, the dynamic with her siblings, even though she was surrounded by friends that were, you know, very different and not who her parents wanted her to be surrounded with, I think always having that soft spot for her siblings was definitely something that I admired the most because I definitely have a sweet a soft spot for my sister. So I think that was something that was really cool to see. Oh, that is so cool. And it brings such a human element to it. Um, and especially like you having a sibling, that's something that you can totally, totally relate to. And I know exactly what you mean. My little brother is like my best friend. So I love siblings are connected. Okay, so speaking of you being in character, Rena seems to be very angry most of the time. So as an actor, how do you go about filming those scenes where you have to get into arguments with cast members? Obviously, that's the job, right? It's acting. But I know sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it is depending on, you know, what kind of day you had. So Um, How did you get in the headspace to get into that anger and those arguments? What was that process like? Yeah, I think for me, it was, you know, number one, just creating like a really nice and safe boundary with all my castmates. I mean, we all had such good relationships off and on the set. So I think it was just really important to have a good relationship with them. So then that way, I remember one day we were on rehearsals with Gita and this was you know, like just our first day of um, rehearsals. But I remember like me and Chloe, we were just so nervous to like, you know, scream at each other. And we were doing so many games where we were just like yelling at each other. But I just remember like, you know, we were such good friends, you know, and I think it's so important to have that sort of dynamic with your castmates. So you don't feel like, oh, you know, like, oh, she's bullying me. But, you know, like, this is the job, like, this is what we do, but we can still have fun. But I think for me, just really getting into the headspace, I think going back to the playlist, just really listening to that kind of made me feel like having this tough kind of persona which was super important to me and you know Gita and Quinn we were they were so wonderful where if I had any questions or I had any confusions I could always talk to them about it but just really getting into character and understanding each scene one at a time was always super important for me yeah 
that and that's such a good point like your best friends with your scene partner off you know off screen was there a conversation after it all that was like oh that was you know that was intense or I'm glad we got through that one or or is it not like that because it is acting but was there any kind of follow-up after the big scene oh yeah a hundred percent I think going into it we weren't really expecting a lot of emotions to come in I think especially for me I'm not a very emotional person especially when it comes in that aspect but I mean after we shot that scene in the first episode I remember we were all just like like we need to take a deep breath because I mean <laughs> it is a lot you know portraying real people I think but setting those boundaries was always super important and we all cared for each other so deeply and you know it's so important to just always have those talks with each other so although we did have those moments on set we could always have fun with each other and have those deep talks as well yeah that's really cool and that's that's a part of the entertainment industry that I feel like it's not talked a lot about and it's so interesting because you're right it's real people it's real relationships but I love that you guys gave the space and the the support that you know you guys both needed um okay so a big thing that our our audience always likes to know about because it's so interesting is can you cry on cue is that part of your practice as an actor and if so um what is your do you have a tip for an aspiring actor who wants to learn how to cry on cue yeah that's a great question I think for me, I never really understood crying on cue because at first it used to come super hard to me, but I think when you're in the scene and when you're in the right moment, it truly does come to you. And if you can really understand the character and get into the mindset of, you know, her or him, I think it's really important to just, for me, I really just try to think of a sad memory, which is very sad, but I like to just think of a sad memory. And then I also just... I think when you're in the moment and you understand the character so well, it truly does come to you because you're kind of in that headspace already and you truly know the character. The character is your own now. And for me, I just really took that into consideration and kind of just did my thing. I love it. And correct me if I'm wrong, but crying on the cue too, crying on cue as an actor isn't necessarily the goal. A lot of times it's to get into the headspace, to be in character, and you're in a scene and you don't know if you're going to break down crying or maybe you're going to be super angry. Um, am I correct in saying that, that like crying on cue is not always the goal, it's to have that real emotion. And then if tears come, great. If they don't, we don't always cry in real life when we're really upset. Is that accurate? No, I would 100% agree with that. I think you know, I I think we all, even in our real life emotions, even if we want to cry, sometimes we can't, it just won't come out. So I think it's really important, especially as an actor, to just understand your character and who you're playing. And if the tears come out, they come out. Otherwise, that's just your raw emotion. Yeah, so true. And I hope that as young people watch this, they learn from that. And like, don't be so tough on yourself. If the tears don't come, it's okay. It's more about being in the moment and connecting with your scene partner and really being and embodying the character. So that was a great answer. Thank you for that insight. Um, this is fun. I always love hearing what did you and the cast do together outside of filming to help you build those on-camera connections that we see on screen? Yes, so me and a bunch of the kid cast were um, staying at the same hotel. So oh. for me, uh, Izzy and Chloe, who play Kelly and Josephine, we would go to the hot tub, we would just chill, or we would go to each other's hotel. Um, me and Chloe would always go on walks, and me and Izzy would always go to like the mall. And uh, me and Ayana, we would always just go on walks and talk about our favorite YouTube squad, which is the beta squad. So we always just talk about them. And I think especially for the family, it was really important. Um, Ezra and Archie, they are just so amazing to work with and Anoop as well. And for us, what we would do is we would just invite each other out to dinner and we would just hang out and we would go to Victoria sometimes and just tour the place. And having that dynamic with the cast was just always so much fun. They were seriously like my second family. So. That's so fun. I always think that probably one of the highlights of doing shows, doing movies, is the connection and the friendships that you get to make on set. So that is so fun. I love that you were all staying at the same hotel and you could just hang out whenever. 
Sounds like the best time ever. So what was one thing that you learned from one of your fellow cast members that you plan to take with you as you continue on your career in acting? Ooh, so I think for me, I got to set um, very early, but I had finished my scene super quickly. So I got to watch Lily film one of her scenes that she was filming because me and her, we don't have a lot of scenes together as, you know, our storylines kind of contradict, but it was really cool for me to see how she interacted with um, the her scene partners in that scene. It was so interesting for me to understand she was staying in the moment, you know, throughout the whole scene, which I think some is something that is really hard to do, especially as an actor. You know, I have a very like bubbly personality. I always want to like talk. And I think it's it was really interesting to just see how she stayed into character throughout the whole scene, throughout the whole day. And I think that really portrayed on camera super well. So that is definitely something that I'm going to take into consideration for sure. I love that. Okay. And then a question about that, an acting question. So like you said, it's hard to stay in the moment 100% of the time. And I remember years ago when I took an acting class, the teacher was saying the goal, the goal, which is very hard, but the goal is to be in the moment 100% of the time. And the closer that you can get to that, like 50% of the time, 80% of the time, you work up to 100, which she was saying was very rare. Um, and I thought that that was so interesting. So for you personally, what, what, well, like realistically as an actor, what do you think is a realistic amount of percentage, if that makes sense, of like to be in the moment? Am I making sense? I totally understand. I think, I think from my perspective, I think it's really different on each and every actor. I think especially since it was such a heavy show and yeah. it what it definitely did take a lot of brain power and it was really heavy on, you know, my heart as well. I think for me, it was really important to also just have a sense of lightheartedness to it. I didn't want, you know, the whole day to always be sad. I, I didn't want everyone to always be, you know, gloomy. And I think for me, I was really able to kind of get into Rena when I was able to snap out and in, in and out of it. I think that was super important for me. So I think it's really different for each and every actor and how they do it. Cause I'm sure a lot of people like method acting, but for me personally, I think it was really important to just, you know, talk with the crew when I'm off. And yeah. I think for me, it was just really important to just have a good time and also, you know, do my scenes as well. Yeah, that's a great point, especially when you're working on a project where it is heavy. You need to be able to snap out of it. You need to be able to transition out of your character's headspace. It's so important for mental health and just being happy in general. So that is a great point. I, I love what you said. Um, what is something funny that, uh, that happened off camera, whether it was like a behind the scenes moment, maybe you guys were out to dinner one night, maybe it was in between, you know, takes or whatnot, but what's like a funny off camera moment that happened? Oh my gosh, I have the perfect story for this. So we were filming my um, my birthday scene in the second episode where we're all sitting on the table and we had actually filmed that scene on my real birthday. So I was, <laughs> I was turning 13. Um, so I was 12 and I was turning 13 that day. And um, Ezra, he gives uh, Rena a poached egg, like two poached eggs. But while he was saying it, Ezra, he doesn't have a natural in Indian accent. He has a British accent. So as he's saying it, he has a mix of both accents. And we all, me and Archie and even both of the kids, we all start dying. We're like, we're laughing. Like we had to cut the scene and everything. Like I was trying to keep it together, but I seriously could not. And I remember that joke just ran from the second episode to the eighth episode every time <laughs> greeted each other we went poached eggs <laughs> I just remember we would greet each other each and every single time like that and our last day that we worked together Ezra had gave me a gift and I opened it up and it was a plushie of a poached egg and it was the cutest thing ever and I think it was just such a cute little full circle moment because we had worked so hard from the second episode to the eighth episode and our family dynamic had grown so much as well so that was definitely a very funny aspect of filming <laughs> That's so cute. I love that story. And I love that you have a little plush stuffy too. Oh. <laughs> That's so cute. That is such a fun little token, a little memory to have with you. Um, what was one first for you working on this project, whether it was 
I mean, really anything. What was just one first that happened to you while filming? I think a really good first for me was learning ranges. I was working with our first episode director, Gita, and during rehearsals, I was, I was kind of wondering like, oh, how do I get into the headspace for Rena in episode two? What about in episode eight? What about in episode one? And for me, I was just really wondering like, oh, how do I do this? How do I differentiate between the different feelings she's feeling? And Gita brought up a really good fact of just having different stages. So we had, you know, Rena at level one, Rena at level 1.5, Rena at level two. And I think that was a really good first for me because it made me really understand how to kind of get into the different feelings of each character at different moments of time. And that was super interesting for me to see. That is so interesting. Okay, so part of our content right now, we're starting to produce a little bit different content in addition to what we've been doing. And part of it is masterclass style because we have a lot of young actors, actresses who follow us and they want to they want to learn more. So that was so interesting what you just shared. Did you call that ranges? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what I call it. <laughs> okay, cool. I love that. So you had your character and then you had your stages. So you kind of knew... Yeah. Wow, that is so interesting. That's a great point because you don't shoot the show in order. Exactly. Hard. Okay. Wow, that is so interesting. Thanks for sharing that. What do you hope people take away from Rena specifically after watching this series? Yeah, I think for me, I just really want people to understand that, you know, Rena wasn't just that troubled teen that you know, was just trying to look for a way to escape. There was so many factors surrounding the way she thought. Yeah. And I think it's super important to just understand each and every single individual in your life as, you know, not just as a person, but for Rena, you know, as a sister, as a friend. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important to just understand like who people are, judge them just by how they look or how they act and truly understand who they are for what they do and what they say. Yeah, that's so good. You are so wise beyond your years. <laughs> you're, you're quite incredible. Um, what was your first acting role? Well, my first acting role was a 48-hour film called Let It Slide. Ooh, love it. What was your first audition? My first audition was for a Microsoft commercial back in like 2018. <laughs> I love it. Did you book it? I did not. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you know, it's rare to book your first audition. So there's that. Also, I'm bad at rapid fire because I want to talk about everything. Okay, back to rapid fire. Yeah. What was your first dream role? Like when you were little and you're thinking, I want to become an actress. What was your first dream role? Ooh, my first dream role was to be in the show Bunked and to also be a clown in it. <laughs> it's so fun. How old were you when you wanted to do that? Oh my gosh, I think. I didn't even think about dream roles until I was like 10, but I think that was definitely my first one. I was like, oh, I want to be an it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so this might be the same answer, but first movie or TV show to inspire you to become an actress. Ooh, I was actually watching Bunked with my sister and we were watching the behind the scenes of that and that just totally got me wrapped in. I was like, oh, I want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> I love that. Okay, what well, was your first day on set? My first day on set was the Let It Slide 48-hour commercial with two of my best acting friends. Ooh, no, how fun. First on-screen kiss if you've had one. Ooh, I've not had mine yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay, first time you had to cry on cue slash first time you had to get emotional on set. Ooh, I think it would definitely actually be on the, Under the Bridge when we had to film the fourth episode. That was definitely when I had to cry on cue. It was a little hard to get into, but when it came out, the tears came as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I know it's like when you nail it, you're like, yes, this feels so good, even though you're crying and you're upset. First mm -hmm. costume you had to get into for a role. Ooh, first costume. I did a play called Black Beauty back when I was in third grade and I had to be a small horse so I got to be in a little cute little costume and I got to Muppet the horse which was super fun. 
That is so cute. I remember when I was six, I did my first like musical theater play and I was a starfish and I'll never forget the costume. It's just something fun that sticks out in your mind, you know, when you're young. Um, how fun. Okay. And then first line that you can still remember from a character that you played. Ooh, first line. I have to say, no, don't do it from Black Beauty. <laughs> Bye. Talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe to Young Entertainment.